This video is going to talk about factoring polynomials of some pretty special conditions. These conditions uh, and situations include the difference of cubes, the sum of cubes, and polynomials in quadratic form. Um, one to add on here is also the difference of squares as well. So let's also add on their difference of squares. Um, one thing to note about that is that there is no such thing as the sum of squares. Okay, let's, um, let's talk about cubes. Now that we remember perfect squares, there's also perfect cubes. Perfect squares were numbers such as 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. These are numbers you get from doing the number squared. There are also some important cubed numbers you should remember as well. Here's a few that I want you to try to memorize. One cubed, of course, is one. Two cubed is two times two times two, eight. Three cubed, three times three times three is 27. Four cubed, four times four times four is 64. And 5 cubed. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. If you memorize 1, 8, 27, 64, and 125, you'll be pretty good for most of the problems that you'll see. A good variety. So again, remember, I do want you to memorize these numbers here, just like you've memorized your perfect squares. These are your perfect cubes. Okay. Situations such as the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes actually have formula that will help you create your factors. So I want you to go ahead and pause this video and write down all these um, formulas because we'll be using them and referring back to them as we try to do our problems. Okay, welcome back. So let's go ahead and try to apply these formulas to factor out a couple different problems. So here you see I have the sum of cubes and a difference of cubes. I've used exactly the same terms and numbers and powers, just one with plus and one with minus, so you can see the difference. So first off, let's identify what A and B are. In the sum of cubes, A is equal to x. In, and the B is not equal to 8. It's what cubed makes 8. And what makes 8? 2 cubed makes 8. So our b is 2. Now we're doing the sum of cubes because I see a plus for sum. So here's the formula again. Okay, It's a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. If I plug in each of these into the correct spots, I will have my two factors. So a is x, and b is 2, so x plus 2. a is x, so a squared is x squared, minus ab. a and b is x and 2, so we can just put 2x, and plus b squared. b is 2, so 2 squared. 4. And that would be our answer. So as long as you can figure out what a and b is, and you know the formula, you just put them in there, and you're good to go. Again, you could go ahead and do some big time foiling to see if it goes back and turns into x cubed plus 8. And if it does, then you know you used and remembered everything correctly. OK, let's take a look at the difference of cubes. The difference of cubes, a is still going to be our x. And our b, again, remember, it's not 8. It's what cubed made 8. 2 cubed made 8. So our b is 2. Here's the formula we're going to put it in. So this is a difference of cubes. So it's a minus b to start us out followed by our a squared plus ab 
plus b squared. Let's go ahead and put in all our a's and b's, our x's and 2's. So a minus b would be x minus 2. a squared, that'd be x squared. a, b would be our 2x, or x2. It doesn't really matter, we just like to put the 2 first. Plus b squared. b is 2, so it's 2 squared. 4. And this would be technically your answer. I want you to notice some differences. When we have the sum of cubes, it's because we see a plus between two things that were cubed. x is cubed, and 8 comes from 2 cubed. When we start our formula, our formula has a plus sign first. Same thing over here for difference of cubes. We start, we see a minus sign, so we are going to start our formula with the minus sign. Beyond that, it's also good to realize that both problems have two plus signs and a minus sign. So you see here, I have only one minus sign and one minus sign. And I have two plus signs, one, two, one, two. You see? In both the formulas, you have two plus signs and a minus sign. In the sum, you start with the plus sign. In the difference, you start with the minus sign. Hopefully, that will help you remember these. Okay, so let's take a look at a little more complicated example. First off, let's identify, is this a sum or is this a difference of cubes? I look in the center right here, and I see a plus sign, so this is going to be a sum of cubes. Sum plus sign means sum. Now, I have to think about, what is A? Okay, A, it seems like, is more than just X in this problem, because I have a 64 here. So I want to ask myself, I mean, what cubed made 64X cubed? Well, a 4 cubed makes 64, and the X cubed will make X cubed. 125, what cubed made that? Hmm, 5 cubed made 125. So, this is our A, and this is our B. Let's uh, write down the formula one more time. This is a sum, so let's start with the plus sign, A plus B, followed by our, our little trinomial, A squared minus AB plus B squared. Two plus signs and a minus sign. One, two plus signs, and a minus sign. So now let's go ahead and plug in all those things. A plus B would be 4X plus 5. Parentheses. A squared would be 4X, but we're going to square it all. Minus A is 4X times 5 plus 5 squared. So I have some kind of simplification I need to do here. So let's rewrite this as 4x plus 5. That doesn't change. 14 squared is 196, followed by our x squared. We have a 4 and a 5 in the multiply for 20x. And then our 5 squared is 25. So these are the two factors that, if you multiply, actually do make 64x cubed plus 125. All right, let's talk about quadratic form. I want you to realize that it's no sweat because you already know how to do this. You've been doing quadratic form. Here's a quick little example of quadratic form. Let's factor 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. See, we remember how to do this. We know it takes two sets of parentheses. We ask ourselves, what makes 2x squared? Well, a 2x times an x does. What times what makes the 1? 1 times 1. And since the 1 is positive, it must be plus and plus. So this is a quick example to remind you that you actually do know how to do quadratic form of polynomials. It's also important to remember that there are some special ones, like... Let's talk about what 
what something like uh, x squared minus 9 is. So what would make this? Well, x times x makes x squared. 3 times 3 makes 9. And for negative, it'd have to be a positive 3 and a negative 3. This right here, this is called the difference of squares that we talked about during the objective. x squared is a square, because it's squared, and 9 is a square because it takes 3 squared to make it. So let's take a look at this example. Try to think. We need to remember, we need to make two sets of parentheses to make this one. What times what makes 81? Well, 9 times 9 does. What makes x to the fourth power? x squared and x squared does. What squared makes 16? 4 and 4. And since it's a negative 16, it's plus and it's minus. And this would be our answer. I want you to realize that we are allowed to do this type of factoring because this is and this and this are all squares. 2 squared, 9 squared, and 4 squared. If this was not the case, then this wouldn't have worked. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. In this problem first, let's go ahead and look across it. I notice that everything has an x and they're all even numbers. So I can definitely find a GCF for this. So look across all these and I notice that all of them can be divided by 4. All of them have an x and I have 6, 4, and 2 so the highest power they can all give up fairly is 2. Now let's go ahead and rewrite x to the power of 4, because 6 minus 2 is 4. There's no number in front, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. Negative 20 divided by 4 is negative 5, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6, and 2 minus 2 is 0, so there's no x's there. Now I'm looking at this. And I see 4, 2, and no x's. Believe it or not, that is a quadratic. So I can actually, when you end up with trinomials, and they are all even numbers, all even exponents, when you get a situation like this, it's actually a quadratic. You can actually try to figure out what is going to multiply to make this. So I know that x squared times x squared will meet x to the fourth power. 6 it would come from 2 and 3, but also 6 and 1. So let's start with 6 and 1 and see if this works. It's a negative 6. So let's put negative 6 and positive 1, and let's just test, okay? This would be a negative 6x squared, and this would be minus x squared, and that equals negative, so that, sorry, this would be plus x squared, so this would equal negative 5x squared, just like that's in our problem. So, this is correct. Okay, back that up. Now don't forget that you did factor out a GCF in the very beginning of 4x squared and rewrite it and you have your answer. Okay, this pretty much covers all the special circumstances you'll see with polynomials. Okay, in pretty much every other case you're going to be factoring by grouping. But when you see things such as the difference of cubes, the sum of cubes, to the difference of squares, and special quadratics, this is how we approach them. Okay, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment, and I'll see you back in class.